Thank you, Acting Speaker, and how lovely it is to see you in the chair this afternoon. But it, do, it doesn't give me any pleasure to rise to speak on the repeal of the Victorian Responsible Gaming Foundation. Uh, I was just having a conversation with the member for Shepparton, who was in fact on the board uh, from early last year, and can't speak highly enough about the, uh, the work that the foundation does and has done and the data that it analyses, the lived experience it takes into account, and particularly the, um, the work that the VRGF does in regional and rural Victoria. Uh, and before I really get into it, I, I, I would like to acknowledge the member for Eureka for sharing her stories, as I well know, sharing uh, lived experience and uh, personal stories in this place can be rough, but I think uh, it is vitally important and gives a very human element um, to, to how we approach these sorts of things. So the purpose of the bill, as we've heard from many of the speakers uh, throughout the day, as the title suggests, the bill implements the government's uh, the repeal of the VRGF and to allocate its current responsibilities between the Department of Health, the Department of Justi Justice and Community Safety and the Victorian Gambling and Casino Control Commission. It acts as both the Responsible Gaming Ministerial Advisory Council and the Liquor Control Advisory Council without legislating a replacement model, which is perplexing enough that you would make a move like this without legislating a replacement model to take over the work that both of those councils are doing. Uh, and it also replaces the Responsible Gambling Fund with the Gambling Harm Response Fund. Now, I think everyone will agree that uh, gambling reform uh, is needed and more work is needed in this space because we know how accessible. As the member for Shepparton was uh, talking about with, with another important personal story, when you have children, and I'm sorry, at 18, you're still a child. I was still very much a child. I'm sure you were still very much a child acting speaker at the age of 18. But to have a, an addiction to gambling, and largely because of electronic gambling, whether that's... Um, mobile phones, iPads, just the accessibility of it and the only, um, the only checks and balances are a pop-up box that says, are you 18? Yes. Anyone can, if you can read the word yes, you can get around that. So it's, to have, to hear stories like that, it's really quite heartbreaking and more needs to be done in this space, but I'm just perplexed as to why this would be the move forward, to have the work that the VRGF do, which is from someone that sits on the board, amazing, and they are doing such great work, they are a respectful board, you know, they're doing fantastic work, but then to send all of what they are doing into three different directions to essentially do the same thing sounds like not only double handling to me, it sounds like triple handling. And the minister herself says that, um, and I will quote from a letter to the member for Shepparton, a couple of uh, paragraphs in, uh, the Minister for Casino Gaming and Liquor Regulation says the Foundation's research program has been instrumental in advancing understanding of the complex nature of gambling harm, how it manifests, who is affected and why some groups are at more risk than others. Of particular importance has been the work on the significant comorbidities, I hope that's how I say that, of gambling harm, including mental ill health, drug and alcohol use and family violence. Now, we know that these can all be, con you know, one begets the other almost off, off, in often, you know, more often than not, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just, and I know this was raised in PAYAC last week about why we would take a single foundation that's doing amazing work and spread it across three different, in three different directions. And the member for Gippsland South asked the minister at the time, or it may have been a member of the department, um, is it, it just feels like it's the vibe. It just feels like it's the vibe of the thing and is it political because this was something that was set up by the Liberals and the Nationals? It just, it, it, for any other reason, I just am failing to see, after reading through the bill, after reading through what the outcomes will be or what the direction is now, it just seems like a 
I just fail to see, and there is always, there's always, it doesn't matter how much, it, I just don't understand. We've got someone sitting here that sit, sat on the foundation that speaks so highly about the work that's been done, the data that's been collected, the research that's been done. And Order, they member are, for Eureka. Again, I, I just fail to see why you would stop, why you would repeal a foundation from doing that work. I do, uh, that is, that's my main issue with this bill here. I just, I can't understand what, and I wish someone would publicly justify the repeal to, because we just haven't, I have not seen why on earth we, we would be doing this. And when we go back to, when we go back to talking about gambling reform, again, I think there are other, other measures we could take. I do a lot of work, being in a cross-border community, and before moving forward with, um, with gambling reform, it needs consideration. That cross-border issue, we know this is an issue, right? Having one set of rules on one side of the river compared to the other is a real problem because that does nothing for gambling harm in Victoria in, on the border because you literally send that from Victoria five minutes across the road to the clubs in New South Wales where the rules are completely different. And we will see this come out down the line with the, the other reforms that have been flagged. That it, there, there needs to be much more consideration to this. And I had the, uh, the Shadow Minister up with me in Mildura and Robinvale a couple of months ago so I could show him even, because I know it's difficult to understand how close these clubs are on one side of the border to the other... So I brought him up to have a look and see that it is literally five minutes away from the Euston Club Resort to the Robinvale uh, Golf Club, for example, where there are large gaming rooms. Same thing in Mildura with all of the different venues there to the Kumiella Club, for example. So one set of rules, it's, it's, I talk about having separate regulations or reforms for regional and rural and particularly border communities because doing one thing in Victoria and not having a border bubble or a border precinct on both sides, particularly with gambling reform, is just fraught with danger. You know, and I've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of consultation and a lot of, since this was flagged, these gambling reforms were flagged, with particularly um, the Gateway Hotel, the Mildura Working Man's Club, and they are concerned as well. But the point they make is actually really valid. And it, it came, it started with just a conversation about these possible reforms with the CEO of the Gateway Hotel. And he was pretty adamant that instead of overcomplicating these things, enforce licences on with in-venue gambling machines. If you start enforcing licences and venues then are at serious risk of losing their licences, they'll still they'll soon pull their heads in. They'll soon enforce what they're supposed to be doing. And I'm sure for the most part, most venues do. Most venues are very good at towing the line and doing what they have to do. But the few that don't, that ruin it for everybody else, once you start enforcing the licences, if they breach it and you shut it down for 30 days, 30 days be having a game, your gaming room locked is really significant. They do it again and at 60 days, three strikes and you're out. Well, it might sound over simplistic, but sometimes I think we have to get back to the fundamentals and just simplifying this stuff rather than over complicating it. So I was actually, um, when I was listening to the, to the member for Malvern before, uh, and he referred to this letter as well, and we are just, you know, again, just perplexed at why after the, the work that that the foundation has done, why on earth you would take that from that one pathway, the board that was very respectful, I know that they're devastated that this is happening um, because they put their heart and soul, you know, there's people with lived and lived and lived experience that contribute and I know that they are, they're, they're devastated. So I just, I'm having real trouble understanding why why this is being repealed and uh, how, what the outcomes are going to be. Thank you. I tried to get